Hello everyone, and welcome to another sketchbook flip through. This sketchbook I just finished recently. I was working on it from March 31st to July 3rd of 2017, so it's all pretty recent stuff. On the first page I always like to do a swatch chart of all of the tubes of gouache and watercolor that I own. This drawing over here is a crab. Um, one of my professors at art school had a jar of preserved crabs. They smelled really bad, but they were beautiful um, orange tones and great to paint. These were just some color studies that I did for some final senior projects. And over here are some studies um, from bird specimens. All of these are pretty much window strike casualties. Um, some of them are roadkill, but all of them died of natural causes and are now being preserved and used for artistic learning, which I really like. This one here is a painting of my taxidermy partridge. I own this guy, he's sitting on the shelf nearby, and he's a really great reference. This one here is a feather from a different partridge, but the same species. And on this side, I was just playing with watercolor and gouache, just seeing what sort of different patterns I can do on this paper with the way the water moves. This squirrel here is another art reference specimen. Um, he was hit by a car and I found him and decided to keep him so that I can study uh, squirrel anatomy from him. And this squirrel here, this one's a little bit gruesome, but this is a squirrel that my teacher found, a different species than my squirrel. So it's really interesting to have both of them and be able to compare both squirrels at once and see the differences between the species. This is a Himalayan monal that I sketched from life at the Calgary Zoo. He was napping, which was super nice, but this one I feel that I overpainted. Um, the wash that I did to start looked much better than all this junk I put on top. So sometimes you gotta know when to stop and it's okay if you go a little bit overboard because you know not to do it next time. And here are some hippo sketches from life as well. And these plants here, I bought a tube of serpentine genuine watercolor from Daniel Smith and I was just testing it out. It does this really nice separation of pigments into this sort of green color and then more of a rusty brown color. Um, it's a super beautiful watercolor and I really like it. And then something I've been thinking of doing for a while and finally did it was just painting really nice versions of organic molecules. So I did a few of those. Um, there's glucose. I did some little Mickey Mouse H2Os. Um, this is just from a magazine on the other side there. And then this is caffeine. Um, and then I sort of made the colors like cups of tea. I want to do one that's a caffeine molecule but coffee themed, but I just haven't done it yet. This is my plein air painting of a little pond on Nose Hill Park. And I have a video of this painting which I'll link in the end of this video. I just felt like painting some illustrated type, so this is all hand done in gouache. I painted all of the um, stars and the glows around them by hand. This was a sketch of a Struthiomimus altus that I did at the Royal Terrell Museum. I sketched it in situ, so at the site, um, and then I painted it later, so that was kind of fun. I didn't feel like I was bogged down by matching colors or anything, so I just basically did what I want, which was <laughs> a lot of burnt sienna. This one here is my plein air painting from the Leighton Art Center, and I have a video of this as well. This drawing here is a Merikippus, which is a prehistoric horse. Um, it kind of just looks like 
sort of a regular horse with kind of tarpan um, colorings, but he does have three hoofs on, on each foot here. I saw somebody um, on Tumblr, I think, and I lost the link and I'm very sad about it, who did um, African animals as sort of carousel um, rides, and so that's where the inspiration for this came from. And this drawing over here is just a Tyrannosaurus Rex based on Big Mike um, from the Museum of the Rockies, so sort of more of a slender Tyrannosaur, um, but that was fun to paint. Here's another bird specimen. This one is an American Robin, so a type of thrush. This is an orange crowned warbler, and this is a hummingbird. It's crazy how tiny the hummingbirds are. On these pages, I was kind of just playing around and seeing how the gouache would bleed into other layers of thick gouache. It does a lot of feathering and branching. Um, and it's tough because often it looks much more intricate when it's still wet. And as it dries down and the pigments get absorbed into the paper, the pattern changes a lot. So I was just trying to figure out what sort of consistencies I needed to preserve that patterning when it dried. Here are two more plein air paintings. This one was done in a park called Confederation Park, which has a beautiful little creek running down it. And this one was done at Midland Provincial Park. And I have a video of this one, which I will link in the end of this video. So keep an eye out at the end there. Here's a painting of a bison skull that I did um, just from life observing it. Uh, it's sort of funny because I started off thinking I'll make it monochromatically red and then because I had these swatches up here from a different project I hated how the red looked with these swatches so I painted over the whole thing to sort of match them to these colors um, and it actually made a really nice effect with the cobalt turquoise light laid over this red underpainting. And here's a weird little dragon critter that I drew. It's based on the fire lizards from the Dragon Riders of Pern science fiction series, which I love to pieces. I read them when I was a kid and I still really enjoy them. So I wanted to make a very alien looking dragon. And there's just a few more of those guys there. I really like this one because it's so sort of insect-like and I think quite unusual for a dragon, so that's an area that I want to explore a bit more. And then over here, I was just doing some swatches from a handmade watercolor brand called Redwood Willow, and based on these swatches, which I did from a test card that I ordered from them, I ordered these two colors. I think they're absolutely beautiful, and I like that they don't have a lot of granulation. Some people like granulation in watercolors, but I'm not a fan. Um, I think that's mostly because a lot of my stuff ends up transferred to digital um, for reproduction uh, and sending to clients and stuff like that. So the granulation just looks weird when you scan it. So I like stuff that's very smooth. And that's everything. And I'll just show you in here. I like to keep tickets in the back pocket of my sketchbooks. Just to remember what I've done and you know what time it was and stuff like that so I have my wristband from the Calgary Comic Expo I love going there um, this year my boyfriend and I only went on Thursday which is the short day but basically we've both gotten really into collecting vintage Star Wars toys <laughs> so the best day to go is the first day um, so you can get the first look at all the merchandise there and all of these tickets are from Seeing Alien Covenant. <laughs> I saw it four times in the theater, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to hopefully do some alien movie studies paintings in the future, um, so keep an eye out for that. I love the franchise, and I was really happy with Alien Covenant. I thought it was bizarre, I thought it was very medieval, and I was really glad to see it in so many different ways. I saw it 
in recliner chairs, in normal chairs, in IMAX, and at a tiny, tiny local theater called the Plaza. And when we went to see it, it was 3 p.m. on a Sunday, and we were literally the only people in the theater, and it was the best. So that was my sketchbook. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more sketchbook flip-throughs in the future, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will definitely have more sketchbook flip-throughs coming up. And until then, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!